So, um, good morning, fellow Southern Cameroonians. This is Dr. J. Um, I'm making this video as a reflection piece. Um, a reflection piece on the Southern Cameroonian, Southern Cameroon's and Bazonian quest for independence. Restoration of our independence, as we have called it. I'm making the video because I realize that we have hit a dead end. We've hit a dead end. We've hit a dead end because we have gotten to the space where we have attained, we have touched on the most intense, painful part of the quest for change. Um, the abduction of Mother Mundi has been, in my opinion, for us, a red hearing moment. Uh, a moment where we have finally hit the very heart of this Southern Cameroonian quest for restoration of the statehood of the Southern Cameroons. The restoration of the statehood of the Southern Cameroons, which initially started by a demand for a return to the 1972-1961 Federation, that was abruptly curtailed by Ijo in 1972, buried by Bia in 1984. And the point of departure that got us to say, if we could just return to two-state federation, the concerns of the people of the Southern Cameroons would be catered for. Autonomous governance, self-governance, taking responsibility of our own affairs, being able to manage ourselves and our resources, and then interacting with the rest of the country on the basis of the political arrangement that sees co-management of the country within an institutional and a constitutional framework that protects the minority status of the two English-speaking provinces or of the Southern Cameroon or, the, or former West Cameroon. You know, I, 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 I use this, this terminology alternatively so that I don't get bogged down in some of the debates that sort of often takes us away from the main issues, but I, I would stay focused on the, on the core argument. And of course, we all know that that initial quest for independent, for, for restoration of uh, the Southern Cameroon's heritage in a two-state uh, confederation uh, did not fly, you know. Consumption was disbanded, leaders were arrested, some people flew overseas. It radicalized the movement. What should have been a drive for constitutional change, constitutional reform that could have started off as wanting to take care of the interests of the Southern Cameroons, but help address the broader Cameroonian question descended into complete chaos with the response of the government in Yaoundé and amplified the voices of the independence movement that says, okay, if you ever have a conversation about a two-state federation, then we would go for all outright independence and we are prepared to pick up weapons and fight to make the point. It's been five years getting to six. That point has been made that as the people of Southern Cameroons, we are willing to go to whatever lengths it takes to see that these questions that have been raised are addressed. We do have our divergences as to how we think or what outcomes we want to propose. Some, like myself at the moment, after much thought and consideration, I've come back to a point of departure where I think that a good starting point to make a, an argument that is going to focus our energies on the constitutional and institutional reforms that it takes to reorganize the Cameroonian polity to cater for the management of the expectations and desires of the English speaking people of former West Cameroon could be through a, a 
political arrangement that gives them ownership and management of core. areas of their life, devolution of power that gives responsibility to bread and butter issues, welfare or welfare enhancing departments like health, education, um, agriculture, of course the legal system which is at the very core and at the very heart of the of the of the of the current fight. Preservation of common law as a culture of jurisprudence uh, and sense of justice and equity, which is part of our colonial heritage. Not that we are proud of it, but this is who we are, the fact of the matter, on a fact of the matter basis. So if somebody wants to be live in a society that is governed by common law principles, it should be their human right and entitlement to want to do so. And no government is supposed to superimpose itself to create a system that do not meet the expectations of the people. If the dual quality heritage has given us different expectations as to how law should be conducted, then it's part of being me, reconciling myself with my colonial heritage to want to be governed within a common law system. And of course, the two have coexisted for the last 50 odd years. There's no reason why this cannot be institutionalized and formalized to set a geographical delineation between the practice of common law and civil law in the respective regions. So, I believe that if we cater for the bread and butter issues, and give responsibilities to the evolution of power to locals to handle their affairs, it's going to reduce the need or the perceived expectation to want to not be a part of a national policy because at the end of the day a country and belonging to a country is as good as my bread and butter daily issues of on a daily basis for those who are interested in politics i don't care who is president i don't care who is governor i don't care who is heading what political institution they want to be able to wake up in decent housing that has electricity and water <laughs> protection from insecurity they want to be able to drive in decent cars that they have bought after having earned a decent living drive their children to decent schools that is educating them and preparing them for the future take their parents to decent hospitals that can conduct the most advanced technological procedures prevent them from dying from preventable diseases, be able to go to the market in sense conditions, consume agricultural products that have been produced within their farms in their techni technical know-how uh, to keep them healthy, supplied in markets, sold in malls that are decent, operating within a structure where they can conduct business and enforce it with laws that are just and fair, uh, all of that coordinated and overseen by elected government officials that they can hold accountable. That is the ecosystem of the local as far as issues of governance is concerned. Provide such an ecosystem for him, he couldn't care less what he's sitting as president of the republic. He couldn't care less what is happening at the national level. Zooming governance to such local levels is one thing that is going to unleash the potential for innovation uh, and produce a culture of accountable governance at the local level with elected officials given resources to take care of what I want to call the bread and butter issues of the average citizen, providing opportunities, opportunities that are provided because the person that is being given the responsibility of managing the public resources on behalf of everybody else. It's a local that reports to the local, is accountable to the local, gets his confidence from the locals, renewed through electoral processes that are transparent, and gets sanctioned for underperformance. That's an ecosystem that describes 
devolution of power that empowers local government, gets democracy to the grassroots, and allows people to take responsibility for their own people. If we can do that, we would solve half of our problems.